Okay, in this video we're going to see how to solve quadratic equations with one variable, and uh, we're going to look at three different methods and go through them in order of complexity. So our first example, we can use the easiest method, and this is when you do not have a linear term. So there's no term that has just the variable with no exponent. Right here there's no x term, there's only an x squared quadratic term and a constant. When that's the case, you can just isolate the x squared term, which we'll do by adding 9 to both sides. And that gets us 9 it's x squared. And then you can take the square root of both sides. And that's the square root property. It says you can take the square root of both sides of an equation if you add in a plus or minus. Now, the square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 9 is just 3. So then we just have x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. And that's it. So that's the easiest way to solve these, but you can only do that when there's no linear term. Now, we can check the solution here by substituting these numbers into the original equation. So the original equation has x squared minus 9. If we replace x with negative 3, then we get negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0. So that checks out. If you replace x with positive 3, you still get 9, and so you'll have the same 0 equals 0 result. So those, in fact, are the two solutions, negative 3 and 3. Most of the time you get two solutions with these, but you could get none or you could get one. So definitely check your answers. All right, the next example has a linear term, 4x, and so we cannot solve it the same way. So what do we do? Well, the other two methods work best if we have the quadratic in standard form. And that's when everything is on one side. I usually put everything on the left and 0 is on the other side. So let's do that. We're going to subtract 4x from both sides. 4x minus 4x is 0. And we're going to subtract 21 from both sides. And 21 minus 21 is 0. So that puts it in standard form. Uh, you need to make sure that the terms are in descending order, so the first term is the quadratic or x squared term, the next term is the linear one that has the variable with no exponent, and the last term is the constant. So it should be three terms, x squared, x constant, equal to zero. Now, one way to solve is to factor the expression on the left, and then from that, we can set each factor equal to zero using the zero product property. Now, if you recall, the starting point for factoring was to look at the number in front of x squared. And when there's no number there, that's really a leading coefficient of 1. So the number in front is 1. And then the constant term is negative 21. So we want to multiply 1 and negative 21. Of course, that's negative 21. Now, to factor, we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to negative 4. All right. uh, so you think of negative 21 and 1 would add to negative 20. And then the only other two numbers is negative 7 and positive 3. Negative 7, positive 3 gives us negative 21. And negative 7 plus 3 gives us negative 4. So they multiply to negative 24 and they add to negative 4, which is the coefficient of the linear term. So those are two numbers, negative 7 and 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to write, rewrite this where we split up that middle term. 
So negative 4x can be written as negative 7x plus 3x, right? Because if you were to combine those like terms, negative 7 plus 3 would be negative 4. So we've split up the middle term. Now we want to factor the first pair. And if you look at the first pair of terms, the common factor is x. Right? There's no number they have in common other than 1, and but you can factor off an x. So x, and it would be x minus 7. Right? So if you distribute, you can check that x times x is x squared, x times negative 7 is negative 7x. Similarly, we can factor off a 3 with the second pair. That'd be 3 times x minus 7. I'm going to check and make sure that the numbers in parentheses are the same. x minus 7, x minus 7. That allows us to factor off the x minus 7. That would be x plus 3, x minus 7. All right? So you have the x and the plus 3, and then the x minus 7. Now, the zero product property says that we can set each of these equal to zero and solve. So x plus 3 could be equal to zero, right? Then it doesn't matter what x minus 7 is. If x plus 3 is zero, then the whole thing is zero. And that only happens when x is negative 3, right? Just subtract 3 from both sides. The other thing is that x minus 7 could be 0. If that's 0, it doesn't matter what the other number is, the whole thing would be 0. And so we'd get x minus 7 equal to 0 as another possibility. And that's going to correspond to x equal to positive 7. Just add 7 to both sides. So x could be negative 3 or it could be positive 7. Either way, this is going to be 0, which means this is going to be 0. And the last thing to do is just to check those. Okay, so we made a mistake. So we could take the original equation and let's check our solutions. So replace x with negative 3. That equals 9. And over here, let's replace x with negative 3. And that equals negative 12 plus 21, which also equals 9. Okay, so negative 3 works. Now let's try 7. So let's replace x with 7. 7 squared will be 49. And 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 21 is also 49. So that works as well. So negative 3 and 7 are the two solutions. Now in our last example, we have a linear term. So we can't do this the way we did the first example. And it actually won't factor. Uh, it's already in standard form. So we don't need to do that. And if you try to factor this, you'll see that a times c is equal to 1 times negative 5, which is negative 5. So if you were to factor, you'd want two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 3. But there are no two integers that do that. Right? The numbers that multiply to negative 5 are negative 5 and 1, and that adds to negative 4. So, does not factor. But we're in luck. There's a third technique that never fails, and that is using the quadratic formula. So, for the general quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, the solutions are given by this formula. 
So we just need to identify A, B, and C and put those in the formula. So what is A? Well, there's no number in front of x squared, and in that case, A is equal to 1, because it's x squared is the same as 1 times x squared. When you have subtraction like we do here, then B and C can be negative, because the general form has plus. So subtracting 3x is the same as adding a negative 3x. So B is negative 3, and C is negative 5. Now we're going to replace A, B, and C with those numbers in parentheses. And then we need to simplify this. So the first thing to simplify is to take the opposite of b. If b is negative, it makes it positive, and if it's positive, it makes it negative. So negative 3 becomes 3. After that, you want to square b, which is always going to be positive, right, the square of a number. So negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, and then you're going to add on negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. So multiply those numbers together to get positive 20. After that, go ahead and multiply 2 times a. In this case, that's just 2. And to finish simplifying, go ahead and add those two numbers in the square root to get 29. Now, if you can take the square root and get a whole number, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, leave it exact and just think of it as two separate numbers because there are, in fact, two separate numbers, one when this is subtraction and one when this is addition. If you're asked to approximate that, then you can do that. To check our answer with a number this complicated, I'd say we go ahead and use the calculator. And so we're going to put 3 minus the square root of 29 all over 2, and we're going to store, it's the button above the on button, store that for x. Now when we write something with x, it's going to use that number. And let's just check that x squared minus 3x minus 5 is in fact a 0, and it is. You can do the same thing for the other suspected solution. Just change the value of x to 3 plus square root of 29 all over 2, and then rerun the calculation for the quadratic expression. Since those are both 0, then we know that the two numbers are in fact the solutions.